Good afternoon, Year Six. Good afternoon. And the next chapter, chapter twenty-two, is called Shadow of a Doubt. A few moments later, the pair were sat opposite each other in the vast library of Saxby Hall. Strauss's legs dangled off the sofa. They were too short for his feet to reach the carpet. Stella tiptoed back over to the door and closed it as gently as she could. She didn't want to wake her aunt, who was still asleep upstairs. What you have to remember, miss, the detective told Stella, is that there was a huge public interest in this case. The Lord and Lady of a great house losing their lives in a moot car accident. It was front page of all the newspapers. Stella hadn't thought about this. It must have been quite a story. Of course, with any fatal accident, there followed a thorough police investigation by a team of the very best detectives from Scotland Yard. They did? asked Stella. Of course, miss. And after sifting through all the evidence and interviewing all the witnesses, a team of this country's finest police detectives concluded there was absolutely no sign of foul play. They said it was just an accident, asked Stella. The detective was incredibly compelling and she was slowly coming around to his way of thinking. Yes, they did miss, without any shadow of a doubt. Not even a shadow of a shadow of a doubt, or indeed a shadow of a shadow of a shadow of a doubt. And do you know the one person who came out of this whole story as the hero of the hour? No. Your beautiful Aunt Alberta. The little girl was shocked, not at least being her aunt been described as beautiful. She was the first at the scene of the crime. I mean, accident. The girl had no idea. Really? Just then, the door of the library slowly opened and Stella jumped up out of her seat. Could it be Aunt Alberta? As the door swung open, it revealed Gibbon. The ancient butler entered the room. He was holding a silver tray and on it was a pair of burning slippers arranged on it. Your toasted crumpets, your royal highness, he announced with a flourish. Let me put these down on the table for you, sir. And with that, Gibbon dropped his tray to the floor, sending hot buttered slippers flying into the air. One of the slippers landed in the detective's lap. It was clearly roasting as he winced in pain. Ow! Oh! As quickly as he could, the detective brushed it off his lap and onto the floor. But Gibbon wasn't finished yet. If you... I've forgotten the voice. If you require anything else, just ring the bell, sir, he said, producing an egg timer from his pocket. He balanced the egg timer carefully on the detective's head. I will be in the library. Then the butler bowed and left the library, closing the door behind him. An irritated Strauss took the egg timer off his head and threw it onto the floor. Don't mind him, detective, said the girl. That's just the butler, Gibbon. That man is an imbecile. He should be taken out and flogged. Stella knew Gibbon was by no means the best butler, wasn't by any means the best butler in the world. In fact, he might very well be the worst. Still, what Strauss had just said was incredibly harsh. Now, where were we? Continued the detective, clearly irritated by the interruptions. Um, you were telling me that my aunt was first on the scene, prompted the girl. Oh yes, yes miss, and the wonderful woman tried desperately to revive your father and mother. She did? The girl was gobsmacked. Yes miss, sadly there was nothing she could do and they were both killed instantly. Shudder, uh, Stella shuddered at the thought. Alberta didn't manage to save you, though. She risked her own life pulling you from the wreckage of the burning car. The little girl took this in. Oh, sorry, she mumbled. So sorry, I, 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 had, I had no idea at all. The detective seemed to know a lot more about what had happened than she did. Weird. 
Of course, the accident had sent Stella into a coma, so it was hardly surprising. But now she was beginning to feel guilty about accusing her aunt. Miss, you are very lucky to have an aunt like Alberta. She's kind and caring lady. Beautiful, talented, the best auntie in the world. Of course, you were in hospital at the time of the funeral, but you should know that your aunt spoke with great affection in church. She clearly loved her dear brother and his wife with all of her heart. And Miss Alberta even sung a wonderful piece of German opera for the mourners as the two coffins filed out. She has a very remarkable singing voice. What? thought the girl. Stella had had the misfortune of hearing Aunt Alberta singing many times over the years. It was like the sound of a cat being throttled. She brought every single person in the church to tears, continued the detective. Probably because her singing was so terrible, replied the girl. This is a wicked thing to say, but the detective, how dare you? His anger frightened the little girl and she immediately apologised. Oh, I'm so sorry, I really shouldn't have said that. You should be ashamed of yourself, miss, he's declared. She is a world-class opera singer. Stella felt like bursting into tears. This was turning into quite a telling off. Sorry, she mumbled. Yes, you should be. And whatever you do, don't blub. I cannot abide blubbering nippers. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Two months after the funeral, Miss Alberta discharged you from the hospital. She knew no one could care for you better than her favourite auntie. Despite the power of his words, somehow Stella was still wasn't entirely convinced by the detective. So, well, why did she lock me in the cellar then? Strauss looked ruffled for a moment. Hmm. Well, I imagine that if she did place you there, he was choosing his words very carefully now, it must have been for your own good. No doubt you were still in shock after finding out your parents had been killed in a terrible accident. Shock can lead people to do very strange things. Perhaps, miss, you are trying to run away from home? Am I right? There was no doubt that Strauss was a brilliant detective. He seemed to be able to deduce anything. The man knew the answers to questions that she'd not even asked yet. Uh, yes, admitted Stella, I was trying to r r run away. I thought as much. And in this awful weather, you could have caught your death of cold and we can't have that now, can we, miss? No, replied the girl. Not just yet, murmured the detective under his breath. What did you just say? demanded Stella. Nothing, miss, replied Strauss innocently. All seems a bit fishy to me. The next chapter is called Foul Play. Until next week, have a lovely weekend and bye. Bye.